Namaste Star Family, welcome back to The Matrix Oracle. My name is Audrey. This is a pick a card reading and honor to Saturn moving direct in Pisces. Saturn is often associated with the concept of time. So we're receiving some message from divine timing. So let's look at those piles first. Okay, I'm pretty excited about this completion of Saturn um, in this archetype of Pisces, then moving into Aries. This is going to occur May 25th, 2025. So November 15th to May 24th, 25, we're still in Pisces after a long retrograde. Retrogrades are review energy. Saturn in the tarot is the world card. In that world card, it's all about understanding how your perception of the universe, of your reality, is created by yourself. So the universe is working for you. It's not happening to you. It's working in your favor. So there's messages here from Divine Timing uh, regarding this matter. So life is happening for you. So pile number one, we're working with Mother Isis here, very much about creative power and energy. Pile number two, we'll look at this after. And we're going to see pile number three is here. Okay, beautiful cards. Now let's look at the zodiac sign. If you want, you can look at your Saturn placement, but it doesn't have to be... Okay, so let's look at what we want to associate those two. Yep, that's it. <laughs> All right, so pile number one, we have Aries. We have um, Libra. We have Virgo. And we have Sagittarius. Pile number two. We have Pisces, we have Aquarius, we have Leo, and we have Taurus. Pile number three, we have Cancer, Scorpio, Gemini, and Capricorn. Okay, let's look at those cards. Pile number one, it says, stay true and be in your power. Let's read this together. You are a sovereign divine being with spiritual authority and freedom within. You do not need permission from anyone to be who you are and live your life as you so choose. This is your divine birthright. Guard it as the precious treasure, treasure that it is. And remember that you are a divine being, free to be you. Okay, so that's pile number one. Pile number two, we have divine sun child. And it says, blessings of the sun flow to you now. It is time to allow your life to flourish without limits to let your light burn bright and without veil. Just like the midsummer sun burning without contest in the Egyptian desert, it is your time to shine bright. Beautiful. All right, let me move this. Pile number three, talismans of potency. Okay, and it says, Sacred tools and objects can become an extension of your energy field, focusing your power and intention, helping you to heal the split between spirit and matter, bringing physical matter more deeply into light and life. You are encouraged to work with sacred materials in a conscious way to help your own healing and enjoyment of the material world as a part of your spiritual practice. Ooh la la. I love this. So again, uh, you can choose your sun sign or your Saturn placement or both. Let's get to those messages. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your messages from Divine Timing. So life is happening for you. 
Saturn is moving direct in Pisces. One last time before we'll enter in Aries. So I'm excited about this. It's a whole new, <laughs> it means a whole new cycle for this planet, which is connected to your root chakra. And the card that I saw, okay, spoke about Eros. So the physical body, the physical aspect, it just didn't feel right just yet, okay? Felt like there was more shuffling. But we'll see. I wanted to mention it because it could be something that is coming from the past or um, that could be playing uh, as a part of this reading. But I felt that it was an old energy, okay? So let's see what else. What else here? And we're going to look at this card once again. I did read those cards for uh, Mother Isis, but I will do this again. It's speaking about your um, power. So stay true and be in your power. You are a sovereign being with spiritual authority and freedom within. You do not need permission from anyone to be who you are and live your life as you so choose. This is your divine birthright. Guard it as the precious treasure that it is. And remember that you are a divine being, free to be you. So while I was saying this and I heard <laughs> the need permission and the card that I mentioned that felt like an old energy, I wonder if there is some type of old energy that had to do with your physical appearance uh, or the way you felt you had to uh, look like as a physical being. You know, I remember like it was yesterday uh, when I was still, you know, pursuing and, you know, very invested in my musical career, how I had stopped buying altogether. I was, it was still in the late 90s, any type of magazine, especially feminine magazine, because of the pressure of um, the supermodel wave that was on um, all the women. And I remember that it was such a relief to stop having all those images that were everywhere, uh, just in my field. It just helped me a lot. And I'm sure some of you can relate if you're doing any type of career that you had to um, apply for as far as a casting. You know, it felt like, oh, you're not tall enough, not blonde enough, not short or blonde, blue, whatever color. It was like, you know, there was this type of criteria. And I feel that the messages from divine timing is showing how you've outgrown Maybe a certain aspect of comparison or being in an energy where you felt you had to compare. Because remember, Saturn, as it is the energy to um, encompass this pick a card reading as far as its association to time. Um, you're the creator of the energy field. In tarot, it's the world card. You're creating your own reality. So some of you, I feel like that was the old energy I picked up. And I was like, no, we're not there anymore. So you're not in that place, my dear pile number one, where you feel you need to um, get permission to uh, look a certain way, be a certain uh, expression of yourself, you know, oh, you should be looking like this if you're going to apply for this career or that, uh, you know, whatever persona. Uh, th th that's like something you've already moved away from. And I love that for you. So that's part of the early message for you. It's, it's to celebrate this aspect that you've overcome and had to overcome and face maybe as a part of the old reality the old matrix that you were in. Now we have the card connect. I create strong emotional connections with the important people in my life. Love this. Okay. So emotions, people. Mm -hmm. Then we have 
the shadow. Interesting. Okay. Well, we'll have um, tarot cards if we need some clarification here. And, ooh, the wild. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> I'm laughing um, just because some of you, I'm going to tell you right away, with the wild and the shadow and the connect, you're being called by Lilith. This is like, it, it's very strong. I can feel it strongly. Some of you, uh, knowing your Lilith placement will help you um, connect to her wisdom, connect to her energy. Some of you, maybe that was a part of you that helped you transcend some of the old matrix of your reality. Maybe some of you, that's how you fell into a trap feeling that life is happening to you versus for you. But we're in a place now where you're, you, it's almost like this, this aspect of you is coming out with a lot of strength, a lot of power. If some of you want to deep dive in this aspect, I do offer um, goddess readings for that purpose, awakening the goddess within. I have an option for Lilith. That's some of my favorite readings is to uh, read the goddess energies, the muse as well. Okay, but with the shadow aspect, the wild, there's a part, and the connect, there's a part of you that is going to awaken, okay, in this Saturn going direct transit. So for the date, November 15th to May 24th, 2025. Now, that's exciting. What shadow aspect is awakening? Because I don't feel like it's something you have to fear. It's an aspect of you that may have felt that it didn't have the space or needed to ask permission to be expressed. But no more, my friend. I can see that. I can feel that. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can, I can see it. It just it feels vibrationally like something that's going to appear. Is it your appearance? I don't know. Wow. Okay. The cars are already flying. The Six of Cups. You know what? I feel that some of you... There's a part of you that you may have repressed uh, through the conditionings of your childhood, your child environment, or growing up, you know. From, so there's like a, some, some type of behavior, some type of expression of yourself that is raw, that is wild, okay, that wants to be acknowledged. And maybe there's also... You know, the shadow aspect, meaning like what the question from divine timing in Saturn here, realizing what made you change from your initial feeling of your birthright. Okay, we're going to inquire. I need more, more, more information about this. I love it. I did not know what to expect, but Saturn <laughs> never disappoints. <laughs> Uh, divine timing. Yes. Let's see what we have. Ooh, the high priestess. This is something you're going to channel. This is something, you know, I feel, okay, that's not going to resonate with everyone, but some of you, there is a version of yourself that was very uh, psychic, medium, highly intuitive, highly empathetic, okay, that I feel maybe is, is the version that got <laughs> casted in the shadow, okay, some of you, you may have your connection to Lilith, um, or your connection to a part of you, a part of your shadow that is, um, that you hid, I want to mention, some of you, if you have Lilith connected to a planet, what I mean by this is that if it's conjunct, I personally have my Lilith next to my moon. So almost like to get like to a few minutes. And that when I medita meditate to the moon or when I do all those like cosmic forecasts with the moon, my shadow aspect, my Lilith, my part of myself that is raw and wild comes from that connection to that planet, to the intuition, to the impact. So some of you, there might be a connection to a certain planet that is significant 
if you want to work with planets, I do have the sun and the moon available on my Awakening um, the Stars Within album available for everyone. But all the other planets, you will have to subscribe to uh, any level. So Kundalini level is the first one and you can work with all the planets. That will help you connect with Lilith if you have a conjunction in particular. It could be also an opposition, okay? You can get some messages about opposition, but I would say like the strongest it would be if the planets are merged. I'm going to list down below the option for the Lilith reading, but also the awakening uh, the stars within, okay? So that can help. All right, let's see. So there's an aspect of you that was highly receptive, highly sensitive, that wants to come out, that wants to guide you, that wants to make a reappearance <laughs> in your life. And that's why the divine timing, it's like, it's time. You need to hear this right now. Life is happening for you. And I feel that some of the message we're going to channel here uh, are part of um, maybe what you've learned from hiding the, this aspect of yourself. Ooh, five of wands. Yeah, what you've learned. Five of wands is a lot of competition, but inner conflict. You probably have felt a lot of, you know, um, if you experience competition with others, it was to actually let that version of you shine through because you were trying to match a version of yourself that was in opposition with it. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. What else did we learn from putting this aspect of ourselves into the shadow? What for pile number one? What did they learn? What did they learn? We have the Six of Swords. Wow. You know what? Through this also, you um, you allowed yourself to remove some of the criticism. Some of the way people used to um, think about this aspect of yourself. So maybe some people saying like, oh, you're too sensitive, uh, or, uh, you know, a lot of psychic people, they have like this, this, this wound, uh, with, um, being called crazy. I've seen this a lot because they have like those intuition or this knowing, and, um, they will come very clearly about sharing all this and people would be like, oh, that's crazy. I don't believe you. So there's something here that, um, you experience here, pile number one, that your shadow aspect, okay, the expression that you is you, is authentically you, wants you to acknowledge that even though it was not comfortable, okay, to hide this part of you that was highly empathetic, it helped you understand also what it would create inside of you. And that means the message here from divine time and from Saturn is that when you feel competition or com inner conflict, you know you are trying to <laughs> outcast a part of you that wants it to be expressed. Okay? A part of you that um, maybe you have to deep dive into why you would think uh, it doesn't deserve a certain place in your life. And I'm seeing this also, I'm being reminded of the connect with the influence of others and people and how this message says you don't need permission. You don't need permission from others. Okay. All right. Let's see what else wants to come forward. Okay. All right. Feels like a group. We have the Ace of Cups. So there might be some healing um, as far as really healing and appreciating this aspect of yourself, my dear um, pile number one. The part of you that now can see more clearly, now that can understand um, 
how fitting in or trying to fit in created more competition with I'm I'm hearing with people that that you didn't even want to compare with or need need to compete with because that was putting you in a box that was that was boxing you and putting that aspect of yourself that true self that raw authentic self that the world wants you to express in a box in a closet okay and you're learning and you've learned through the process of coming back into that place okay coming back from that shadow integrating it um how to remove some of the internal patterns, uh, thought patterns that it created. You have the Knight of Wands and the Three of Swords. Okay, so here with this energy, let me just move it a little bit. I feel, especially with the Knight of Wands that calls for action fast, but also calls in terms of wisdom for patience it's it's a fast night okay but if you want to benefit from its energy you have to like let the fire build up okay and what i feel like here it's it's asking you to feel some of that pain so you can transcend it so not a lot of people like to <laughs> feel it to heal it but i really sense that for you and some of you again you might not be aware of what um, that wound or that placement is um, but it's definitely connected to Lilith I I am just so surprised that she's coming up but you know with Saturn's energy um, and this connection to time it's like what do you need to hear right now and this is what needs to be um, shared so let's see as far as healing okay now that we know there's there's something to he feel to heal what is this what is this wound sadness of course it's going to create sadness it's going to create sadness not to be um not to feel that this version of you that feels highly connected to your inner child but also to your dreams hmm, would be left in the dark. Okay, so how can we support this? I already have certain frequencies that are coming up in my mind, but um, I, want, I want the cards to support us here. It came back! Okay, so some of you, even though the energy is old, and maybe you're not facing those competition, it might still be in your physical body and it's time to release it, okay? It's time to release it in the physical layer of your body, competition, feel, you know, um, feeling, I feel like you, you, you have to ask permission for being what you want to be or go after what you want to go after i love that the card came back because it felt like an old energy but i thought it was healed and some of you that might be the case i'm like seeing a card that wants to come forward but it it still needs that last oomph mm, seven of cups you see how there's like many ramification it might be something you don't realize that pattern that has, uh, I'm hearing infected, that has affected multiple aspects of your life. Okay, let's see what multiple aspects of your life. I would, you know what? I can feel it with the connect. It has affected who you're attracting in your life. It has affected the, the, the opportunities through people, the jobs. Mm, wow. Yeah, the opportunities, the jobs. Can we have more details about this? And I'm not surprised that this is coming up, you guys, because a Saturn is moving direct on the 15th. We also have the full moon in Taurus. 
you will have another picker card for this. But we also have Pluto that's going to move in Aquarius. That's it. We're not going back anymore in retrogrades with Pluto as far as going into Capricorn. That's it. Pluto is finally entering in a cycle of 20 years in Aquarius. The first five degrees of Aquarius speak of the law of resonance and your friendship and your affinities. And I feel like divine timing in here, Saturn in particular, wants you to acknowledge this. So you're not repeating this. So it doesn't come into your life. You're comfortable with expressing a raw aspect of yourself, uh, whether it is like a goofy, you know, just like I'm hearing no filter without any filter on. Okay. Let's see what it manifests. My dreams helped me to manifest all that I need. It was, it was affecting your manifestation. And I will tell you why, because no matter how powerful of a creator you are, if you are in conflict with yourself, if you still have thoughts about yourself that are lower ring your energy, your life force, your frequency, how do you expect to easily manifest? It's going to make you feel like you have to work hard at it. Oh, wow. I love seeing that now because it's just, it feels like, wow, like a completion. Do you understand? Some of you, if you've ever felt that you had to work hard, okay, at, the, at manifesting what you wanted, it was because a part of you, you did not let it shine. You altered a part of yourself and it broke your heart. And this is, this is a crucial time, it seems, because, and I think this is because of <laughs> the astrologer here speaking, is because of the timing of astrological movements. Okay? Definitely. Wow, I feel so much more space. You know, for some of you, if you have access to any level of the YouTube membership, work with the void. Work with the void to, uh, to alleviate this pain. And you can work also with the mantra that I use for the Rainbow Bridge. So everyone else, you can work with the Rainbow Bridge. It's helping with healing subconscious love patterns, things that broke your heart. And obviously, you can see it, okay? Um, the mantra is HU, H-U, HU, okay? It's an ancient way to uh, sing the name or the resonance or the seed mantra uh, that means God, okay? I feel that this is so beautiful. I'm so grateful that we channel this message for you because... I just can feel how much it's going to uplift some of the heaviness of how it was affecting your manifestation because the universe was trying to work in your favor, but that aspect of yourself, that thought that you had to compete, to compare, um, and, and, and all the thoughts that came with this, it, 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 it worked against each other, okay? So that's what I have for you, my dear pile number one. If it supported you, please remember to like those videos. It first of all puts a, a heart and a smile on my face, okay? So thank you so much, uh, but also it helps the channel to grow. So thank you, and I will see you in the next reading. Namaste. Namaste, pile number two. Welcome to your messages from Divine Timing. So what urgent message do you need to hear at this time? I've been saying urgent because pile number one kind of aligned a lot of components of the astrology um, that is occurring at this time. And I could feel like how uh, those messages were really going to matter. Uh, and it's going to come as a confirmation for you, pile number two, as the weeks go by. I don't know why I'm starting this introduction like this, but this is how I roll, okay? Um, you chose the beautiful card of the Divine Sun Child, 
We're going to reread this together. Um, if you chose according to zodiac placement, you can choose your Saturn placement or you can choose your sun sign or any placement. Okay, your intuition, Pisces, Leo, Taurus, and Aquarius. Okay, so let's move, in, move it to the side. We have blessings of the sun flow to you now. It is time to allow your life to flourish without limits, to let your light burn bright and without veil, just like the midsummer sun burning without contest in the Egyptian desert. It is your time to shine bright. So we can expect some type of message around your glow up here. You seem to um, want to manifest something in particular, a lot of yellow, a lot of gold. Um, you know, Saturn is in tarot, the world card. So you're creating your reality. And I feel like this is a message that is about this power that you have to create your reality. So let's see what guidance we're getting here. Okay. So for pile number two, whoa, <laughs> it's fast moving energy. Okay. We have the animal. Wow. Something raw. And it, you know what, you guys, this is so interesting because I did not expect this. Um, but in pile number one, Lilith's energy came up very strongly. And here with the animal, this aspect of being raw, being, being you know, uh, unfiltered by the mind, you know, by other people, it is coming up again. If that's something that you would like for me to read in your chart, I have an awakening, the goddess within, where I offer reading certain goddesses, and Lilith is one of them. She has so many beautiful teachings. If your Lilith is next to a planet, you can meditate with a planet to receive some of her guidance. Okay, I have an awakening, the stars within, which is an album for all the planets. Uh, you have access to the sun and the moon and all the other ones you need to be part of the YouTube membership. Okay, so let's see about this raw instinct, okay? There's something about your potential mm. and your instinct. Do we have to heal? Because I did not expect three healing cards to come up. And I'm seeing healing cards because that's the name of the deck. Okay, let's see what we have. Cycles. Mm. Very Saturnian here. Cycles. I'm hearing right away that it's your time to shine. It's your turn. There's something about your turn. Mm. And with the eyes meeting. Okay, let's see. Ooh, help from above. Yes. And you know, we have a full moon energy here as Saturn is going direct. Um, we have also a full moon in Taurus. So maybe, oh, <laughs> Taurus energy. Okay. All right. So that energy of the full moon is helping you. Mm, selling out. Okay. So very clear message here. You have to strip yourself down from the labels that you think you need to succeed, to shine bright, to be accepted. T Divine timing is saying it is now. It is now your turn to shine in your raw form. The alignment of the planets will get chills everywhere, Oof. especially down my legs. It's because it's, it's, if you have tried in the past and you felt like, but Audrey, it didn't work out. I tried. I was unfiltered. I, uh, and what I mean by unfiltered, like I tried my best to, you know, do what I love. And, and even this aspect of yourself, I'm hearing that feels like it's not enough. That's because you're putting a certain scale, a certain range, a certain condition and expectation of what it means for you to show up. 
some of the people that follow this channel and my Instagram or whatever, they don't know how long I've been on social media. And I was not always doing what I'm doing now, but I have been studying not so much social media, but how to convey the emotions of what I love, to convey to others with love what I love. So others are not at all involved because it was more of learning how to communicate my love of the love that I had for things I loved. <laughs> so it was like all the work I had to do was about love. And I feel like this is where you may have a wound in the love that you are. And now, right now, my dear pile number two, you're receiving guidance, precious guidance, and help from your spirit team, from your guides, but also divine timing. And what I mean is that what's going on in the cosmos is helping you shift finally get to those results. So we're going to get some guidance here to make sure that you're stepping away from um, representing a version of yourself that is not in alignment with who you truly are as far as the love that you are. Focus on sharing the passion, the emotion that you feel for the things that you love. That's how it comes. I don't know. I, I thought I was going to use cards, right? Because <laughs> when I just started speaking, I was like, wait, are we, are we taking cards? Are we pulling cards? Yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> you know, part of my passion also, I'll tell you, because I feel like it's a message among me. I do love cards. I love astrology. But I remember as a child... Okay, I moved a lot and I experienced a lot of rejection, not just from school and people my age, but also from family and parents and things like that. And I'm sure we're all in the same basket. But I remember one thing is that when I was going into those new schools, I usually had the tendency to gravitate towards the one that were rejected as well and to form a group of support, where I wanted to empower them. We don't need them. We, we can be whatever we are. And often we were rejected because of our looks, our background, our race. Again, you know, I mean, things are, have evolved a lot, but, you know, I'm from the 78, so uh, <laughs> 70s, 80s. Um, and things were very different, especially also in Europe. I don't know about America. Um, but that's, that's something that I feel like when I was giving you a pep talk, that's also something that I always had, okay? And that's part of my personality. And I feel like there's something part of your personality that you can add to the things that you want to share and that creates your business or creates, you know, uh, a, a hobby that you turn into an income, into uh, something that sustains you, that... Um, makes you shine bright or just experience that spotlight because I really feel with those two eyes looking that it is your time to shine. It is your turn. And the universe wants you to hear this, but you need to hear those like little stories I have to share as far as like, okay, but you know, there's some qualities that add to that. You know, there's some qualities. Uh, I love when people uh, often in on the YouTube, I see a lot of comments about my laugh. Who would have thought, like, who, like you know, um, yeah, I love laughing and I love making people laugh. But I didn't think it was going to add up to my channel. But it does. It connects. So there's certain things that I feel for you, some qualities, and that's what we're going to ask. What are the qualities that add to your passion, Add to your craft, add to your business, add whatever it is that you want to manifest that is a part of you that is the essence of love, okay? So let's see. What is this added <laughs> aspect of yourself, okay? We're going to need, ooh, purpose. Purpose and cycles. Let's see. My dreams connect me to my purpose. Okay, I feel that some of you, you don't realize 
but your ability to visualize, to daydream, to maybe uh, connect to your dreams, connect to spirit, connect to just energy. You know, I feel like this, um, again, hardest, artist energy, there's a connection um, to time, to how energy moves. That can be part of how you know what is needed by people at a certain time. So if it was that you were selling a certain uh, product, you're able to connect to that. You're able to connect to the time of that. And I feel like this is something you need to honor, pile number two. Because this is also now the time to use that talent because your time to shine is here. Your time to shine is here. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, <laughs> those cards are strong. Ooh, the bridge. This is interesting because um, I gave the rainbow bridge as a frequency for healing for pile number one. Some of you, if you hesitated with pile number one, definitely go there. Okay, I'm going to, you're going to see it in the description box below. But I feel that you, you're in a time where the universe is here to help you bridge the gap between where you are and when you where you know you want to be but it requires of you to see yourself fully that means loving yourself with all the qualities that you bring that are beyond just you know well um you know, I'm, I'm, for me, if it would be like just, I'm an astrologer or I'm just, you know, a tarot reader. That's not just who I am. There's something here that you're um, thinking that you're selling, but part of what adds to it is some emotional qualities. Okay. And I feel like this is a perfect time where the heavens want to show you how to connect those dots. I don't know why, but I feel like I, I want another. A sweet dream card on the other side of the bridge. Okay, we have, wow, I mean, destiny. My dreams show me that I am the co-creator of my life and destiny. Yeah, okay. So, if you want some vibrational alignment for you, okay, I'm going to give you something. I want you first to work with my pharmacy, um, vibrational pharmacy, I have a frequency that is for vibrational alignment. Okay. It's, it's just frequencies and it holds the nine solfagios. This is a frequency I created based off the Abraham Hicks teachings where they talk about being in the vortex. And I was like, in terms of sound, how can I create <laughs> being in the vortex? And right away, the nine solfagios just came up uh, very strongly. Okay, so you can use the vibrational alignment solfagios for this. And if you like to chant mantra, you can chant the mantra HU, H-U, that I use in the Rainbow Bridge frequency. Okay, that would be more of an active uh, meditation and at night, if you want, you can fall asleep to the rainbow bridge. Okay, so that's what I have as far as vibrational help. But did you see also how I shared with you pile number two? Something that has nothing to do with cards and astrology. Music technology. Music healing. Which is part of something I had to study. Like since I'm five years old, I have studied music. And I went to college for it. And I was very disappointed when I did not manifest something that was being a musician. But I actually hated being on the road. When I was gigging and I was professionally singing, I hated the lifestyle. I was more of a, like a little chicken. I like to go to bed earlier. <laughs> I love the stage, but I did not like the whole lifestyle around it. Okay, so there, that's an example for you that some of you... There's certain also things you've learned along the way 
that now is the time for you to almost like merge together. Okay, so let's get some tarot um, cards for this, for pile number two. How can we support more? <laughs> Here, pile number two with the merge, wow, of their talents. You're definitely going through a whole... Uh, Remember when I said the, the labels, you, you're dropping a lot of those labels that you thought you were, things that you thought you were. For the ones that have access to the YouTube membership, use the void. This is my ego death frequency. I actually suggested it also for pile number one. So you're going to look at yourself in diff very different ways after you listen to this. And if you want the support of the frequencies, you're going to be able to be a whole different person. And I'm not joking. I think it was just like uh, not even a month ago, I had a session with someone one on one. And after we did the session, I said, you know what? You're going to see in a week, you're going to be a whole different person. And it, not, it did not miss the person experience a whole awakening and Kundalini activation and it was because I could sense it. It was the time. It was a time in astrology. It was the vibrational time. It is a time for you of crucial rebirth through the sun. I wouldn't be surprised. Let's see here. You see what? I'm, I was going to roll the dice for um, what sun season, but it was already there. Sagittarius season. It's coming. It's coming. The season is coming. You're going to be a whole different person. I'm channeling this. It's like, uh, what, the 13th right now? Uh, the season starts on the 22nd. The judgment card. You see how you're high yourself? You're, you, you're reaching a time here where you're going to be reborn because it is part of your purpose, because your vibration and what you bring to the world is needed. And you have a whole team, a whole crew. You have me, <laughs> you know, that is supporting that process. By the way, if it's you, drop me a rainbow. I will know. I will know it's you, pile number two. Okay. Then we have the page of pentacles. What did I tell you? That's a card of someone that has something to offer. You have something to offer that is very special. That is part of your destiny. Can we have some uh, details about that offer that's very special? I mean, I know it's a lot of people, but can we have some details? The devil card and the eight of pentacles. Wow. Some of you, you know what? Because some of you, there's a couple of different messages. The devil card is Capricorn, okay? Capricorn, in, t t in terms of light work, is an ascension guide. So some of you, part of your self-mastery, what you bring, part of your destiny, part of your offer, is to help people through the ascension process. It's spiritual guidance. It's, it doesn't have to be just spiritual guidance. It could be tools, okay? Tools of ascension. Tools to... Uh, do some shadow work, tools to uh, align with their true self. I feel that a lot of the things that you had to do for yourself instead of selling yourself out and probably having to experience that version of you that did not feel in alignment, okay? Those, this is from this type of energy that you're bringing this type of gift to others. It is important some of you, if you are doubting that your sto story matters, don't. Please don't. You matter so much. Remember, life is happening for you. And when you acknowledge this, it supports so many others that are on the same boat. I don't know. There's a, there's a card here. Look at this. The Thanatos. A web. You know what? Some of you, it's also getting out of a certain matrix, a certain constriction. Maybe also, um, you know, how <laughs> certain type of jobs 
you feel you have to sell your soul, you have to sell yourself out to just earn money um, and not being able to do things that align with yourself. But I also feel that it is part of when you are able to untangle yourself from a certain matrix, you're becoming a matrix, <laughs> a matrix creator yourself. So that means you're able to understand how to weave reality. Okay. And I feel this is a time for you to shine that potential, to shine this aspect of yourself that has been able to bring this about for yourself. Okay. So that's what I have for you, my dear pile number two. Please remember to like those videos. First of all, it puts a smile onto my heart when I see it. Also, when I see your little comments below. So thank you so much for doing this. But I am just enjoying this because it helps also the channel to grow and have more connection with people like yourself uh, that I feel connected on a heart soul level. So thank you so much for doing this and I will see you in the next reading. Namaste. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your urgent messages from Divine Timing. And I'm adding the urgent because uh, literally from what I've seen from the piles is just adding on the perfect divine timing of the astrological cycles that uh, are expected as we are channeling this message. So I am adding the word urgent <laughs> because it seems so important for you to hear this and to heed with the guidance from this reading. I am putting in the description box below all the vibrational alignment, mantra, uh, readings that I suggest the energy of Lilith came up strongly. Okay. Uh, working with, if you have your Lilith next to a planet, work with the planet's frequency. It's going to help you I have an album for this. And, um, yes, if you feel that you need to recreate yourself, a persona, work with the void, if you have access to it, otherwise you can work with the rainbow bridge. Okay. To help with, um, healing. All right, let's see the behind of your card. I don't know why I give you this whole little spiel. <laughs> oh, you know what? Oh my gosh. Okay, part number three. What does it say? Talisman, okay, of potency. Tools, you need tools. And I just described to you all the tools. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> wow. I just love this, you guys. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love. Okay. We have here sacred tools and objects can become an extension of your energy field, focusing your power and intention, helping you heal the split between spirit and matter, bringing physical matter more deeply into light and life. You are encouraged to work with sacred materials in a conscious way to help your own healing and enjoyment of the material world as a part of your spiritual practice. Okay. If you chose according to zodiac placement, we have Cancer, Scorpio, Gemini, and Capricorn. Okay, let's put this aside. I don't know why, but for you, I want to start with this. Okay. The Sweet Dreams. So what urgent messages we have from divine timing for pile number three? Let's connect. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have welcome. When I dream, I invite limitless magic into my life and I welcome my spirit guides to show up in wondrous and unexpected ways. Welcome. I heard, welcome to the show. I don't know if some of you, you have any type of screenplay, screenwrite, book, something you're scripting, but what's for sure is that part of the tools, oh my God, <laughs> part of the tool is writing, part of your tool of manifestation. It's something you need to hear. Remember at the beginning, I said, heed with this guidance. <laughs> seems very important I usually only pick up one card but I you know that's almost like this is part of this okay all right and then vulnerability I allow myself to be vulnerable and honor my inner grace wisdom and beauty you know what's interesting is that I feel that 
For some of you, it's very important to do the shadow work of your goals. And what I mean by this, if you're saying like, I want to manifest a house, okay? Try to see how it makes you feel. And what are the doubts? Is there any? Where do they come from? And try to start doing some shadow work with this, okay? Um, it seems important for you to be able to fully open up to one field that is very important, which is the heart field, the magnetic field. If you're not allowing yourself to feel what your desires, your claims, your goals, your script for life truly makes you feel, then you're, <laughs> you're all, almost like working on half empty of a tank. Do you understand? So I do feel that there's something here and I'm going to give you some guidance about the energy you can work with. I have a frequency and I already listed it below, which is the vibrational alignment uh, in my pharmacy, which has and holds the nine sulfagios. It was inspired when I was listening um, to Abraham Hicks. That's uh, a channeling that I personally love. It always knows how to pick me up vibrationally towards my goals, my aspiration. I've been doing this for years, not as often as at the beginning of my spiritual awakening, but when I was listening recently, and I think it was a couple of months ago when I created this, I asked myself, how can I have this field of creation called the vortex, which they mention, you know, it's like, how can I tap into my vortex frequency wise? And the nine sulfagio came strongly as an answer. And I've been like, before I obviously share all of this, I work with, you know, I guinea pig on myself. And I thought that was amazing how it allowed me to feel um, everything that was in my field. So I would suggest working with that frequency while you write, okay? And let it come out, whatever comes out. And in that same album, I have uh, a lot of healing, vibrational pharmacy healing for things like frustration, fears, insecurities, depression, anxiety, heart blockage, uh, things that can come up. Okay, and I feel that it's important for you because your power, you're going to be impressed by how much it's going to feel easier, but it's going to be more powerful how you can manifest things. And why is it important? Because divine timing is an association of Saturn. The energy of Saturn is associated to Kronos, the god of time. And in the tarot, uh, Saturn is the world card. And in that card, you have someone that is, you know, creating their own reality. So Saturn is helping you to create that field. And when it's in Pisces, it's the last round, okay? So it's like the last zodiac sign of the wheel before it starts a whole new cycle, okay? That we're creating collectively, but also individually. I felt I needed to share this with you so you understand how powerful you can be when you work with this energy, okay? And I feel like tools are very supportive of you and your manifestation powers. Okay, let's move on to the next layer of messages with this. Okay, the vow. I have never pulled that card. The vow. You made, you, you made a vow. There's something about you and your creation uh, and what you write. It's almost like connecting you through time and space. Some of you might not realize, but that's something you vow to yourself to manifest. And it's very dear to your heart. Then we have Kairos. Look at this sacred geometry and more sacred geometry. The shapeshifter. Okay, I I can feel strongly here the presence of your south node. Okay, that's that's going to be 
uh, something else for you, I if you didn't choose according to your zodiac sign or if you did, you're going to get an additional message coming from your past self. Something, you know, that's with the shape shifting. Like you've taken many forms through many lifetimes. That that reminds me of the sacred geometry for the lotus flower of the crown. Many lifetimes to manifest this particular destiny, this particular uh, creation, manifestation. Okay, and now is a crucial divine time for you to do that. You're going to get another message picking your south node placement. Okay, there's a message from your past self. And by the way, that's also a message I have. Let me remember what transit that we have recently a message from your past self. It's the Mercury in Sagittarius. I'm going to write it down, down below. Mercury Sag. Okay. So you have access to this in pharmacy. Okay. Yeah, it's important for you. It's like, you see how I'm taking the time to take notes. This is important. There might be also some scriptures or some things that you wrote. Maybe some of you, I don't know why. It's not going to be for everyone, but some of you, okay? There's certain notes on your phone. Maybe something you scripted, a goal that you scripted, that you have to re resurrect, revive. I'm hearing the word revive, especially. Okay? All right. Now, I'm going to put this aside because... Because you're going to get that message. And if it's if your zodiac south node is here, then it's going to come up in the next layer. Don't worry about it. Okay? Okay. So, what does pile number three need to know now? The box. Wow, this is so interesting. I just rehearsed something that created this energetically um that reminds me of square box breathing some of you if you are into meditation okay i already gave you some of the practice but one thing that if you are more into breath work versus singing mantra for example the breath work you can use is square box breathing and I'm going to illustrate, for example, you uh, in, inhale for three, then hold your breath for three, and then exhale for three, and then hold empty for three. And you repeat the pattern. You stay in those numbers, okay? And you can do three and then go up to four, stay comfortable with four, and then move to five, whatever is your practice. But there is something that is going to be activated with your breath, where you put your focus, you give life to this matrix. You give life to whatever you focus on. Okay? And, that, and I'm hearing as a guidance. And that means if you have a certain goal and you did not address the shadow of it, the emotional doubt, for example, then you're going to manifest more of that as well. Okay? And that's where you're going to already start that you're working against yourself because a part of you is in agreement and the other is not. Okay, so that could help you, the square box breathing, when you work with the vibrational alignment to, to create that vibrational alignment and hold that matrix for yourself so you can address it. Okay, so I hope I make sense, but it, it feels that you are advanced, Pile number three. I don't know who you are, but with the South Node, it feels like uh, you have <laughs> you have a lot of knowledge. This card from the bottom of the tarot deck wants to be shown, so we're going to look at it. Okay, the Ace of Pentacles. It came in the reverse, and it's a shadow. There's something, there's a particular seed that we need to weed. Okay, let's look at that. Maybe that, that's a particular thought, a particular doubt, a particular feeling. Let's look at it. Mm -hmm. Temptation? Temptation of what? There was two cards. And I didn't take it. 
Hmm. You know what? When I said that, there was two cards and I didn't take it. I feel like almost like um, some of you, there might be different offers and feeling that um, this is creating stress, choosing the right offer or not choosing the right one. Rejection or not being chosen. So interestingly, some of you I picked up on, remember here, screenplay, screenwriter, writing and scripting, book, okay? Um, what we need to weed out is the temptation of you to hyper-focus on, because that was reverse, okay? On being rejected. Nobody's going to like it. Nobody understands it. Whatever it is that you're telling yourself that is tempting you for you to think. The universe is saying right now, this is a crucial divine time for you to not allow yourself to indulge because temptation is an indulgence as well. Don't indulge in repeating the patterns of rejection, thinking and doubting yourself. This needs to be removed and hopefully you understand that this pattern of breathing can help you with this. That's a very powerful, powerful way to do that. So you can, it's almost like you can, you can pinpoint it. Okay. I already gave you some guidance about it, but some of you, what could happen when you're working with this type of technique, you could start seeing a specific scenario, a specific event. I feel that you're very visual or you, you, you don't forget easily moments, especially moments of rejection. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's part of your very important divine message here. Wow. Pile number three, you are very different than the others. Very different. You feel very different. You have to acknowledge this difference. This is part of your charm, I'm hearing. Okay, let's get some more details. Okay. The apocalypse is very different. You know, every time I pick this card, I'm being reminded this movie, Apocalypto, where the main character, and I don't know why I keep on going back to movies with you, <laughs> or we're scripting or whatever, but there is something about being maybe uh, very good with photographic memory. You seem very connected to visuals, to images, to lyrics, to books, screenplays, okay? Um, but there the, in that movie that main character is it holds this scar uh, by you know um, one of the bad person okay uh, where they call the main character almost like you almost did it you almost got it to save your loved ones you almost got to save the day or whatever but you didn't almost and part of the animal spirit that is connected with this character is the jaguar. The jaguar, its superpower is to be able to see in the dark, like a lot of those felines, but especially um, being what makes you stand out. Remember I was saying about what is unique about you, is that you can see what other people can see yet. And people will think that it's in your light, that you shine, but it's actually in your ability to see through the dark. You can see, see those flames and the eye, okay? So that's one thing, but because I also mentioned the wound. Remember, we're talking also about those wounds here. Not because you're being vulnerable and open up your heart, but because here, when you're vulnerable with yourself, open up your heart, you might want to acknowledge that some of you or one of the wound could be that you feel like you almost there, but you didn't. Or some other, the other opportunities that were given to you, you felt like maybe you missed out on something or someone took it away from you because you didn't get the role, you didn't get the part, your screenplay didn't get chosen, your project didn't get chosen. You can adjust the story to any type, but I keep on coming back to uh, the screenplay for some reason. Probably because Saturn is very much about 
being our own scripter and writer, okay? So yeah, this feels that you need to hear this. You can see what others can see and you need to persist in that sense. So what can support pile number three to persist? To persist and not give up. It's interesting because I have something I'm going to illustrate with this reel and I want to read it to you. I didn't read it for others. Okay, but I want to read it to you. Um, where is it? There it is. You are the greatest project you'll ever work on. So not, you know, it's like you might be a writer, but really writing and scripting your life is the greatest project. Restart, reset, refocus as many times as you need. Just don't give up. Okay, so th there's... I felt that freaking like in my bones. <laughs> Part number three. Wow. I feel like I could like literally drink tea with you and just have like those deep conversation. And uh, yeah, you, you, there's a depth in you, in your character, that that gives you access to this. Don't shy away from it. And if people aren't, you know, working with this, just Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it. Okay? Why do I have a New York accent here? <laughs> are you from New York? Some of you? Okay. If some of you are, <laughs> drop me a Statue of Liberty. <laughs> okay. Ooh, the Six of Pentacles. Okay. This is a card that speaks of generosity, of reciprocity, of exchange. When you give yourself the space to be vulnerable, to listen to your emotions, you're going to manifest. You're going to get beyond the almost. You're going to get to manifest the people and the opportunities and the receptivity and the reciprocity, reciprocity <laughs> that you deserve and that your project deserve or whatever you're scripting or whatever that it is that you want to manifest. You're going to get that feedback. It's coming to you. It has no other choice, but I think the whole thing that mattered first was that addressing your shadows. And some of you might be connected to Lilith. Um, that showed up, especially in pile number one. So if your south node is in pile number one, definitely feels like an important energy. Um, we have the four of swords. The ace of swords. The Five of Swords. And the Three of Cups. I want another card here. And the Queen of Swords. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay. The last message that I have for you, my dear pile number three from Divine Timing. Okay. Is that this cosmic alignment is meant for you to use scripting. So... However, some of you, even if you don't write, even though it feels like an extension, the pages, okay, writing, the shadow work is what's going to help you get rid of the headache, the background noise. Some of you, I'm going to put it down below because I heard it. I'm going to add my empath playlist. I created this, okay, because as a strong empath, I had no energy boundaries because of my life path okay I was literally conditioned not to have boundaries and it was very hard for me not to have the voices of that conditioning so the people that were connected to those conditionings and I created the empath playlist with those six albums those six frequencies with specific mantras to help me with that nagging voice there was one in particular obviously uh but it and i was actually surprised to see how those frequencies would bring about those people and situations so that's my advice for you if you're a strong empath and you have experienced lower boundaries that would create lack of reciprocity lack of being seen for who you truly are okay uh i want to give you a word of caution 
If you're trying to meditate with my empath playlist and you are full of background noise, you're not going to be able to stop thinking. And that's good. Yes, this is good because it's pulling out all the noise of your field. It's taking out all this BS out of your brain, okay? So you can separate and dissociate just like when you journal, okay, about those emotions. You're able to separate, to take all that noise onto the paper and bring up some space. That's why I created that empath playlist. It was something I needed, like I needed air. And it worked wonders for me and for so many people. So that's something that I trust if that's something um, that you're suffering from, the noise of other people's opinions and voices. Do that, okay? And let me know how that works for you. This is going to help you, some of you. If you want, you can also fall asleep to it. I literally was listening to it in the morning, um, just doing my makeup, getting ready. And I was like, <laughs> mind blown about like the many people that would come up and then I would associate what specific frequency you know uh, would bring up certain people and now I don't have people I have like maybe patterns that can show up and now sometimes I just don't feel anything anymore so that or I don't hear anything anymore and I feel like comfortable meditating so that's a really strong pooler of of bullshit uh, frequencies you can listen to it at night. So I was doing this in the morning and then I would sleep at night with it. Look at this. The Three of Cups is divine help. This is going to help you. Okay, remember your strong message here, part number three, is to use tools. Okay, and even if those are not mine, those can inspire you with ideas. But this is why I create my music. This is part of what I love doing because when I see energies like this, I'm like, okay, well, what are we doing with this? <laughs> And music and sound works very well for me. Um, but that doesn't have to be for you. So that's just a suggestion. This is going to help you rewire your brain and really find true raw power in your goals, in what you want to script. And I love that for you. So that's what I have for you, my dear pile number three. We spent some time with this energy, but I'm so glad we did. Remember to like those videos to support the channel to grow, but also to put a little heart, uh, a little heart on my smile and a little smile on my heart. <laughs> and I will see you soon for the next reading. Namaste.